so many agents are guilty of writing like literally one thing, never cross selling. It's kind of become, I think it's becoming more of a natural process in the Medicare field than it used to be. I mean, I remember when I first started, it was just like, sell the meds up, sell the meds up, sell the meds up, you know? How important is it to cross sell? And then also what are some of the top, when they are cross selling from Medicare as an example, what are some of the top agencies cross selling into? What is up? Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm Rose Cody Askins. Today I'm in my new studio at our new office. If you haven't been here, you have to come check it out. And I'm super excited for our special guest as I interview the National Marketing Director of Elder Care Insurance Services, who works with thousands of agents and agencies all around the country. Please welcome Jennifer Harris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. I don't think we've had you on the channel yet until now right no no it's my first time so no it's, it's about time we've only known each other we've only, we've only known each other for um february will be 10 years 10 years it's crazy to think about how fast time goes by but yeah for sure uh, it's True. been a fun ride yeah, yeah it is cool um well you're in the trenches with agents and agencies all the time we're also right just wrapping up aep pretty much over the next few days we're filming this as of the fifth It'll probably come out in a few days towards the end of AEP or maybe over when it does. Um, as you look back on um, like what, how did you end up in insurance and, and doing this? Like what did you do before? Have you always done this? No. So um, when I, I've got a bachelor's degree in communication. So my dream and aspirations was to work at a big ad agency and be an event planner. Um, but you know, life happens and, and that changed. And I, I started out really kind of in the selling part of the world, selling radio. Um, I worked for a couple different radio stations and selling air is what I call it is pretty <laughs> difficult. <laughs> um, there's nothing really tangible to go and sell, even though it was fun and, and, you know, you're on the radio and you hear yourself uh, on those commercials it was different. Um, so that was kind of my first kind of foot into the sales world. Um, and then I had taken some time off, had had some uh, my children and decided I wanted to dive back into the work field and just answered an ad in the paper. And it was for elder care. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what Medicare was. Wow. Um, and so actually John Bettis interviewed me, who was the owner and president of um, elder care at the time. And um, I started out during answering the phones and we had paper files at the time. So all of our contracts were in files. And so that was my task was to take and and join all these agents paper files into other files um, and just grew to love it. Went on to doing contracting, started doing contracting. Mm -hmm. Um, worked under my mentor, which I still love and talk to every day, which is Steve Brooks, who was our um, marketing director at the time. Um, yep. And so I, I kind of did every little job in the office. I did contracting, I did agent service, um, and then worked alongside of Steve. And he was really great because he he put it in my head from the beginning that you're you're my protege and you're who I'm going to want to take over when I retire. And um, I, I was able to do that. And I, I love what I do and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I love so, it. That's amazing. Um, yeah. It can provide, I mean, the industry can provide a, such an amazing career in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, as you meet with agents and agencies, what are some of the top agents and agencies doing to find success, success year after year versus those that like tend to struggle or eventually fail? I think always growing, right? You hear that, um, you know, pushing yourself. And we were just talking about it here today about, um, you know, when, when Medicare Advantage came out, we didn't do Medicare Advantage. When I started recruiting, I remember saying that stuff's going away, you know. Um, and so at that time, all of our agents had the opportunity to go and get those contracts and things with other 
um, IMOs, FMOs. And when we put our mind to it and said, hey, we're going to grow this part of our business, we're going to grow this part of our production. Mm. Um, we did it one contract at a time, one agent at a time. And today we outright all of our other products with Medicare Advantage. I think that's industry as well. Yeah. Um, but to see that we were always a Medicare supplement shop and weren't going to grow. So, so what I'm saying with agencies is don't be afraid to add a different product. Don't mm. stay inside of one, um, learn and grow about other products because our, our job is to my job and your job as an agent is to make sure that that client is taken care of for all of their needs and yeah. don't leave that opportunity for another agent to come in and write Miss Jones a life insurance policy and maybe eventually take your Medicare sales as well or vice versa. Yeah. That's actually something my, my dad's always preached to that you mentioned as well is like uh, so many agents will are guilty of writing like literally one thing, never cross selling, never. I mean, it's, it's kind of become, I think it's becoming more of a natural process in the mm -hmm. Medicare field um, than it used to be. I mean, I remember when I first started, it was just like, sell the meds up, sell the meds up, sell the meds up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, how important is it to cross sell? And then also what are some of the top, when they are cross selling from Medicare as an example, what are some of the top agencies cross selling into? Uh, number one, DVH. It's the mm. most asked for plan uh, is a dental vision hearing, especially if you're writing a Medicare supplement because it's not covered with that. I would say the number one, and if you're writing Medicare Advantage, is going to be a hospital indemnity product. Um, that is another one that we really wanted to grow our ancillary, just educating our agents on the why and the need to sell and cross sell hospital indemnity products with Medicare Advantage. Um, we have seen such a huge growth in that, which which makes me happy because that means we're servicing more more clients out there. So yeah. I would say those would be my top two would be um, DVH number one, ask for um, on the Medicare side and then Medicare supplement side. And then of course the hospital indemnity on the Medicare advantage. Yeah. For, for those that are um, writing, let's say hundred, 200, 300 plans a year um, as an individual agent or hundreds during AUP. Um, what are some of the top things that they're doing from a prospecting standpoint? to consistently get in front of Medicare prospects? You know, I've, I've seen a, a trend and different ways to get in front of clients. Um, you know, that's always changing, whether what type of lead source that you're choosing. Um, you know, one of the things I've seen grow is, is seminars, educational seminars, um, doing those and being consistent. I think that the main thing is being consistent in anything that you choose to do. Um, you're going to see that success, but, you know, maybe even thinking outside of the box on those seminars, as far as what about HR departments at the city, mm. you know, getting in there and, and talking to those people that are going to be retiring. And when they come off of there, I have some agents that go into schools you know, schools and they go in there and they get in front of all those retirees. And so then it's a constant flow of leads that you have coming in. And then I think also adding additional products like under 65 market, you know, those people as, um, you know, Greg Galen Hendricks, I'll quote her, you know, the spouse mm -hmm. in the house, you know, taking care of them. And then that, that flow of leads that come in that way. And so, I think that's a great opportunity to constantly be consistent to have additional people coming in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, I mean, y'all help the senior uh, market, um, but obviously leading product being Medicare, Medicare Advantage more specifically. Um, for all the life agents that, are, that watch um, us online and maybe haven't added any Medicare contracts or even focused on that niche at all, even though for the sale and final expense, they're running across them every single day. Um, why Medicare? Why has it become, why is it grown? I feel like it's exploded a lot since I first started in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's true overall numbers wise. 
and it can seems like it continues to grow. What, what, why is Medicare such an attract becoming such an attractive part of what we do? I think on on when you're speaking about Medicare versus life, and uh, particularly Medicare supplement is that residual income. You know, growing that residual income to where you're not having to chase it as much. You know, life is big on the front end, right? But if you're not yeah. constantly going out and writing new business, it's it's not as consistent as if you had that Medicare supplement block of business that was growing. It had. I have a quote that I, one of my agents shared with me is that you write Medicare supplements to build your retirement, you write life insurance to pay your bills, and you write annuity, annuities to change your life. And so you mm. think about that and all those different avenues is that when you're writing Medicare, there could be a point in which that you don't even have to get up and go to work and you still get that big residual income a month if you're servicing mm. them the right way. And so we've had the um, a great opportunity this year to work with a lot of um, life agents as well and taking mm. them from life sales to Medicare sales. I think also when you're talking Medicare supplement versus Medicare Advantage, I always tell agents, if you're going to choose one of them, if you're in life and you want to get break into the Medicare market, let's start with Medicare supplements. It's easier. There's the compliance is better. All the plans are the same. So let's stick with that. And then we can kind of add on the Medicare Advantage second. So that's always my thing when I'm training agents is let's yeah. start simple. Yeah. Which makes a ton of sense. I actually, and I hear, I hear this a lot too. Like most people feel like you know, life there's it's like the wild, wild west. There's there's not as much, as much compliance and rules and all the you know stipulations for mm -hmm. you know prospecting and marketing and all those type of things. There's not a certification and you know carrier training and all this stuff. Um, and so I get a lot of questions about like, okay, it, they, it's almost like they assume that Medicare is like daunting and difficult and complex. And in some ways, I guess it is. But what would you say to the agent that's like? do I need to be really smart and do a ton of studying to eventually succeed at selling Medicare? No. <laughs> and I mean, you, you don't have to be, you have to be willing and you do have to learn. I mean, yeah. there are things you have to learn about it. So, you know, knowledge is power so that you know about the products that you're selling. But I think um, that the Medicare is such a need and, you know, with life insurance, if you're struggling to pay your bills, mm -hmm. you're, the first thing you're going to let go is probably your life insurance, unfortunately, true over your health insurance, because, no, no. you know, so so it's a little it's better for you as as the agent to, to be able to sell most everything. But I don't I don't think that it is something. And I think a lot of agents, when you say that daunting of Medicare, they associate Medicare with Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. And so I get that a lot. They're like, well, I have to take certifications. I have to do all this. I'm like, well, not yeah. for Medicare supplements. So mm -hmm. I think just that knowledge of knowing the difference between the sides of Medicare um, can also help. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and, and yeah, it's, there's there's definitely misconceptions around the concept of Medicare that once you dive in and it's not near as complicated as it seems like it's actually quite simple. You know, yeah, that's, what, that's the that's the beauty of it. Um, also, I wanted to pivot to also uh, around the mo like the monetary potential of this niche, um, and you can get as specific or unspecific as you want when it comes to like commissions and renewals and and how it works and how many clients you need to make six figures a year in renewal income and how long you get paid, et cetera, et cetera. Because um, I do get a lot of questions about. Well, isn't, doesn't it take a long time to make any money selling Medicare? Mm. Well, I would say in the beginning, I'm not, I'm not going to mislead anybody in the beginning. It, it is hard, especially if you're just selling Medicare supplements, because those commissions are a lot smaller mm -hmm. um, than if you are out selling a Medicare Advantage product. Those are where you're going to see the faster, higher uh, paychecks <laughs> is right. on that Medicare Advantage side. Um, but I think that if you can just stick with it, um, is what you talk about all the time, Cody, right? How mm -hmm. many people are going to make it? And um, if you can just stick with it, and maybe, especially if you're new to this, it doesn't mean that you and you're in a different career. 
I talk about this too, is that stick with that same career, build up your business, build up your clientele to where eventually that out outpays you than your regular. Um, I would say that it is a little slower um, to build it up because the commissions are smaller monthly, Yeah, you know, but it makes sense yeah. if you're getting paid long term and, and you can keep clients on the books, which a lot of a lot of agents do keep a lot of their clients on the books, especially if they try yeah. to. Um, yes. then, it, then it can stack, you know, 30 grand can turn mm-hmm. into 60, can turn into 90, can turn into 120. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Like I've, I've seen that over the years with a lot of agents, even younger yeah. agents where like literally three years in, they're making like $150,000 a year residually. Yeah. And, or, or they, yeah, they could go make 150 grand their first or second year selling life insurance. Sure. But then you're right. You do have to get, you have to get up out of bed and sell something every day or you don't make any money right, right. Like you're always killing something versus like it's like hunting versus farming to a degree you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um wh- wh- here, here's one thing i was curious about too is um when it, like i'll think of a lot of our audience has heard about elder care insurance services they've seen you at the conference or virtual events or jeremy pilemeyer speaking of different stuff um why elder care and i, I know the answers by the way like i love elder <laughs> care um but what separates elder care versus the other um Medicare IMOs, FMOs, agencies uh, out there in the marketplace? Um, I think the one thing that makes us stand out is our service. And I know a lot of FMOs and IMOs can say that. And Mm -hmm. when we talk about inside of, you know, internally in here, I say our agent service department, which are the ones that are, you know, running the quotes, doing all those things in the trenches, kind of with the agents is the heart of what we do. And, um, we, we truly believe that, you know, we want to be an extension of, of an agent's business, right? There's a Mm. lot of independent agents out there that, you know, it's just a one, one man shop, one woman shop, and they really need us to help them with their business to be successful. And so we pride ourselves on that, um, along with all the tools and technology, you know, you could take, a lot of people have tools and technology, so I don't bring that up to the top, but I think just, you know, it's one of our core values is service. And I think that we truly mean it. Um, We have someone that answers the phone every hour of the day. There's not a recording. You're going to get somebody um, and we will answer and help you guys all the way from, you know, every little aspect we want to be as involved with your business or as uninvolved with your business as you want us to do. So it's really, we're kind of customizable. So, yeah, I can attest to the communication service support. Um, I mean, you, 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 I don't know how you are as available as you are, um, (laughs) but it's impressive, you know, but I think it's because you guys care. You've been doing a long time. You understand what you're doing. Um, and you have, and you guys have an amazing team you know, like amazing yeah. team. Like I, I love I'm getting, pretty blessed. I love getting to come to your <laughs> conference in hot springs um, earlier yeah. in the year. Like that was amazing. If someone wants to connect and learn more about elder care or speak to you or Jeremy or the team, um, mm-hmm. what should they do or where should they go? So they should give me a call. Um, our 800 is our phone number 800-777-9322. Or you can shoot me over an email. My email is Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R at E-I-S group dot net. I love it. Jennifer, amazing interview. It's nice to have finally have you on the channel after 10 years. Thank you. And I appreciate all you do. Thanks for being on the Power Player Podcast. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Also, thank you guys for hanging out and listening. Give Jennifer some love in the comments below. Let her know what you thought of today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with somebody else and we will see you on the next episode of the Power Player Podcast. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Okay, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.